What's up guys, in this video, we're gonna go over something crazy. So who is involved when it comes to the Bancor? So John Maron Keynes was a political economist. He believed and theorized that government had in its power to solve some of the greatest ills of capitalism. So there was a plan set out to create a pseudo currency, and that's a key word, we'll, we'll draw back to that one. And that was built on computer code, which was to be the universal unit of account. He said there was a plan back in 1930. So the when, 1930, the who, John Maron Keynes, and what was he? He was a political economist. And he was big because he went to Bretton Woods. And we saw that in the last video. And he proposed the two organizations that we still have today, the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. And he set out the original plan to have a pseudonymous currency to have as a universal standard unit of account that's on computer code. 1930. So we're talking about the timeline of this being planned out and this trying to be brought and integrated in our financial system has been planned out for a hundred years, but it wasn't successful. And the Bancor never came to light. So his proposal of the Bancor, that pseudonymous currency that was built on computer code and which was to be the universal unit of account. A unit of account, medium of exchange, currency, it's all the same thing there. So you go onto Google and you type in what's a pseudonymous currency, it's gonna say a virtual currency. An unregulated electronic medium of exchange that operates like a currency, but is created and controlled by computer software, also called digital currency. Fast forward nine years later from 1930, and we're here. We're in the moment of the time where this is going to happen. And it's funny because the timeline, we know it stretches and the end goal is 2030. So it's like a hundred year macro cycle where this is getting kicked in and this is playing out. So it's very surreal that we're here and we're aware of it. And we know potential players that might be involved. And we dive into that, I believe around like the fifth mission of Agartha. So remember this because this is key and all the stars are aligning that something is brewing between the new Bretton Woods, between the government digital currencies, between the fall of the world reserve currency and the hundred year cycle there. And then we're talking about the hundred year cycle of this proposal. So the idea of the bank or never came to light, but his two other proposals did, which was bringing on the creation of the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, and the creation of the World Bank. And they did come to fruition, those proposals, but the bank or did not. So why? Keynes believed in two general concepts. He believed that national governments could successfully manage economies. And he believed the global system of economic organization was possible. He created the IMF, the World Bank, those two organizations, the international, multi, supranational organizations are still here today. And they're gonna be the lender of the last resorts because all these other central banks are gonna have bad balance books. You can go on the Federal Reserve website and look at the amount of debt that they have, and I'll actually look it up right now. So you can see right here that the Federal Reserve debt held by Federal Reserve banks is ballooning. It's going parabolic. It's about to have a shoot. This is like the blow off phase. We're at the blow off phase of the federal debt held by Federal Reserve Banks. This is the first time I'm seeing the chart. So this is live and this is crazy. I'm gonna pull up the psychology of market cycles while we're here. So you see how there's like a lead up phase and then we have the first takeoff with a bear trap and then we, we're kind of going like linear with our um, trend here. And then all of a sudden it's like a sharp parabolic skyrocket here and then we have a quick sharp pull back down into below the average uh, here below the mean into despair and then we return to the mean and start that phase all over again. So we could pull that out side by side to here and you can see, hey, we have that lead up phase, right? We had the first bump up with the bear trap and came down and then nope, it wasn't done. So they kept holding that debt, holding that debt, printing that debt. And then all of a sudden, bam. So 2019 hits quarter four and then bam, it's skyrocket up. You already know what happened then. But yeah, and we're going into a phase where we could just go Ooh, and then boom, right back down. So this is crazy times right now. So we need to be aware of this. It could have very long lasting effects. If you're new to crypto or if you've been in crypto for a while and you still don't feel like you have a strategy, then we have the perfect thing for you. Cause it's one thing to have a strategy, but it's another thing to automate that strategy. So what we're doing right now is a waterfall flash sale. This is the start of week one. We just launched our Stargate automated experience, which gives you access to utilize our custom automatic trading bots that we built for XRP, XLM, HBAR, Algorand, and a bunch of other altcoins. If you're sick and tired of watching the charts every single day, worrying, stressing, guessing about prices, and if it's going to go up or down, then look no further than this, because this is the holy grail for any crypto holder or trader. So the IMF World Bank potentially could be the lender and buyer last resort, where you'll learn about the SDR and why that could be the case and how they could turn that digital and back it potentially by some sort of gold standard, as we learned about uh, before this. So and have that new Bretton Woods 2.0 moment, because all these central banks around the world individually for their countries are printing those balance that debt that they're holding on their books, they need some way to get rid of it. One, the IMF comes in and they take all that bad debt. So they can take all that bad debt off of these central banks balance sheets because they're the only ones with kind of no debt on their balance sheet. So they have a stable ratio with the earned interest rate and the interest rate you pay. And you'll learn about that when we get into the SER video a little more. So the IMF would likely in a scenario take the bad debt off of those central banks and now own all the debt, which means own all the country's economies and everything of the world. And we can even see here, 
the kicker. Let's go to the 1988 Economist magazine where the Rothschilds, if you don't know the Rothschilds, they own more than the majority of ownership of the Economist magazine. So this was back in January 9th of 1988. And it said, get ready for a world currency. That same type of talk with a universal unit of account, same thing. And then we got the Economist owned by the Rothschilds, owns all the central banks. And we know who's trying to implement uh, some of these things in here. So it represents birth, death, life, rebirth. You see the Phoenix standing on top of a bunch of all the world's currencies uh, on fire, it's burning. So cash is worthless, insinuating. Remember, this is back January 9th, 1988. This is 24 years ago. I showed you something from 24 years ago, 26 years ago, and 90 years ago. It's been planned. So we see here that 30 years from now, it said, it would be around 2018. So maybe it's a little off with the time frame. But 30 years from now, Americans, Japanese, Europeans, and people in many other rich countries and some relatively poor ones will probably be paying for their shopping with the same currency. Prices will be quoted not in dollars, yen, or DMARCs, but in, let's say, the Phoenix. The Phoenix will be favored by companies and shoppers because it will be more convenient than today's national currencies. What does that kind of sound like? Because cryptocurrencies are more convenient than national currencies. They can be more reliable in some instances in some countries, as well as they're faster, cheaper, and more direct peer to peer. And then we have the Phoenix will be favored by companies and shoppers because it will be more convenient than today's national currencies. So this is just crazy stuff. You have this Economist magazine, so we know who owns it, we know what they own, and we know that the Economist magazine right here. Usually, sometimes they make predictions that tend to turn out. So the bank or the get ready for a world currency. We got the Bretton Woods 2.0 moment. We got the standardized universal unit of account. A lot of crazy things and connections being made. So take all this into account as you're learning about cryptocurrencies and learning about regular currencies and the whole system and try to make sense of it all and see if these are being stretched or this could be the case. Send us some stuff too and we would love to go through it and kind of make connections together. The more stuff we find, the better. So, so let's end this off with a synopsis. So this stuff has been planned for over 100 years. We're talking back in 1930. And there was a plan set out by John Maynard Keynes to create a pseudo currency that was built on computer code and which was to be the universal unit of account. It was called the Bancor, but it never came to light but was likely stuffed in the back pocket of the powers that be. Keane's proposal of the creation of the IMF and the World Bank did come to fruition though. That is why it's important to watch these two big players and especially understand who the IMF is and what SDRs or special drawing rights are. So we're gonna dive into all that in the next video. So I know it's been a lot so far and I know there's a lot of connections being made and this might all be brand new to you. So please don't hesitate to reach out. We're here to help you guys. So reach out with any questions, you wanna talk about something, um, just let us know. So that's it for this video. I'll see you are you sick and tired of just stressing and guessing, holding and hoping, and watching the crypto market go through its ups and downs and not doing anything about it? If you're someone in that position, then look no further than the Stargate automated experience. We just launched it and we built custom automated trading bots for XRP, XLM, HBAR, and a bunch of other utility coins. If that sounds of interest to you and you want to learn more, click the video below and I'll see you over there.